Okay. So we're recording the call tonight for families that can't make it. But firstly, to the five families that are here with us, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, we've got a few more people coming in now. Isn't that always the way? Again, Thursday evening, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We want to give everyone some time here, but um, benefit of the doubt. So um, again, just welcome to our families tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, I feel very uh, lucky um, to be um, or to have drawn the the um, art department prospective student virtual Zoom event this evening. Um, I got it excited to host this call. It's um, um, I've got to know many of the members of the art department here, and it's great to see their, their smiling faces. And we're also lucky enough to have a few of our art students join us tonight. So um, just to give everyone an idea, we're going to um, introduce you to our arts department, a couple of our art teachers. They're going to share a little bit about um, the work that they do here at Fountain Valley School and their experience with the arts program here. And um, each, each of our, our team will spend a couple of minutes just to sort of share, as I said, their experience, and then um, and we'll open it up to questions at the end. Please feel free to um, enter any questions into the chat. Um, otherwise, I'm going to hand it over to our art department chair, Mr. Singh Master, to kick us off. Thanks very much, Curtis. Can you hear me? We, we All right, can. welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I am the, the head of the uh, art department. I live on campus with my family uh, and I also uh, coach the mountain bike team. Uh, I'm in charge of pretty much all things 3D in terms of the curriculum I teach. So I teach our metals program um, as well as our ceramics and pottery program. Uh, I love this medium because it really lends itself to some important conversations in terms of sort of the creative footsteps that we're following in. Um, being a school um, in the location where we are, um, there's, um, there's a history um, sort of of ancestral Pueblo potters and jewelers that we're able to tie into our curriculum to really connect us um, to um, the sort of the creative history of this place. Um, and it also allows us to sort of go outside and get our hands dirty as well, um, whether it's um, sort of using stones, um, learning about sort of lapidary techniques uh, to incorporate into our projects, and um, also uh, slowly but surely um, some sort of alternative uh, clay techniques that are um, very conducive to this area as well. So um, older hands-on techniques that sort of also coincide with the ethos of this school. Um, I love these courses also because there's some great opportunities to learn creative confidence. Um, not a lot of students know how to operate an acetylene torch. Um, and I find that um, this confidence oftentimes lends itself to sort of all walks of life here on campus. Um, Yes, so if you have any further questions, um, please put them, um, please reach out um, or put them down in the comments and um, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Next on our list is uh, Ms. Howell. Hello, I'm Ms. Howell. I'm the studio art faculty. Um, basically what I do here is, well, I teach art and I live on campus as well. Um, and I'll be helping coach our long distance running conditioning program this spring. Um, so basically what I teach, I teach everything from painting and drawing all the way to printmaking. Um, I've even introduced a new class this year with like multimedia projects. So things with like fiber work or found object installations, um, basically anything that we can get our hands on to, we can try and make it into art. Um, it's been a lot of fun this semester. Um, what else am I supposed to say? Class program. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I do. <laughs> Miss Howe, what is your hope, your, your, your aspirations for your students when they take your classes? Oh, I hope my students just kind of like Curtis gain like an artistic confidence in my class, especially my intro to 2D class, I think is one of the most important classes I offer. It's one of those stepping stones to kind of building your foundation in drawing and then painting and color theory. And it's like a really good class that leads you into all your other uh, classes, whether it's with Mr. Hutchinson or Mr. Stingmaster, because we learn about all the elements of design and art. So yeah, 
that class. I love seeing my kids just grow as artists in that class. Oh, Mr. Hutchinson. I like it. Um, I'm Chris Hutchinson. I teach uh, everything imaging based here on campus. So uh, photography, filmmaking. Um, I also run the broadcasting team. Uh, in regards to photography, which is my core background, uh, I teach a 35 millimeter darkroom photography class, um, which is an intro level class. So you don't have to ever have taken, you know, picked up a film camera before in your life. We have a fleet of those ready for you here. Um, and it's, a, it's one of these amazing opportunities that we have here at Fountain Valley, like working on metals, um, like being able to ride, like, like going to the mountain campus. It's one of these things that we're holding really close to our, our hearts um, because it is kind of some of these old human uh, processes that we like to kind of tap back into and, and slows us down, um, which is something that we, we kind of think about here in the West. Um, I also teach an alternative process class, um, which is really all about you know, diving into different formats within photography, um, especially within analog process. So students will build their own uh, pinhole cameras. They will shoot an infrared film. Uh, they will also work uh, with cyanotypes. Um, that's also an intro level class, so no, no experience needed. And then my final intro class is uh, digital photography. So obviously working with the, the formats of our time, uh, we have a full Mac lab of, you know, fully Adobe suite uh, laden uh, iMacs, um, which are excellent pieces of uh, equipment as well as digital cameras for students to use. Uh, and we explore kind of the ranges of basic photography from shooting landscapes and portraiture, uh, but tying the, uh, the core techniques and processes in alignment with those so that students leave with the confidence of, you know, how to use a camera in fully manual mode. But each of my classes culminates in a final series, which is all about working conceptually. So most photographic process and most classes will kind of stick to objective, you know, looking at the world, seeing what we're, uh, what's around us, capturing that. But photography is a medium just like all these other ones. And so um, being able to work from concept and come up with a project and work in series uh, in multiples of images is one of my greatest hopes for my students to kind of tap into that more conceptual landscape and really be able to springboard into other mediums and cross pollinate within uh, the rest of the things that happen here at the art barn. Um, and yeah, uh, I also live here on campus uh, with my daughter. Um, and like I mentioned, I run the broadcasting team, which is a live production program. So uh, for on campus sporting events, we have a, a, you know, a crew of students that deploy to, to capture all of those and, and present those over the Fountain Valley YouTube page, which you could go and see if you're interested. So yeah, uh, and I believe it is uh, Ms. Faulkner next. Awesome, thank you, hello. Um, I'm Amy Faulkner and I teach a few classes here. Um, I am also a dorm parent for Ballantyne. I'm actually here with one of my RAs who's gonna be talking in a little bit too. Um, but I teach choir, ukulele, piano class, and music history. And all of those courses, we kind of look at a variety of things. So in choir, we look at a variety of repertoire. We do songs that are in different languages that represent different cultures. Um, and a big goal of that class is that everybody feels as if who they are is being represented in the materials. We also work on sight singing, we work on theory, and essentially all of the skills that will be needed if you choose to sing and acquire when you go to college. Um, and then in our introduction to ukulele class, we learn basic theory, we learn strumming, finger picking, reading tabs, kind of all that stuff, essentially with the goal in mind that if you want to play an instrument and you want to play along to kind of pop songs, you can just pick it up. And that's kind of the end goal for that course. And then in the piano class, that one offers anybody of any level to come in. So we actually have two students right now who have been taking piano for a while and they're kind of working at their own pace. And then we have a student who was taking ukulele and then the class ended and they joined the piano and they came in with kind of all those theory skills, just ready to learn their next instrument, just wanting to try it all out. Um, and that class is really awesome because you get to work at your own pace. Um, we get to have one-on-one -on -one lessons during every single class. And then every couple of weeks we have performances in class. And then the music history course 
is very cool. I really enjoy teaching it. Um, and it's kind of just like American music history from the 1950s to now and how everything that's been happening is just inspiring new music. It is changing how we look at music. It is leading into new genres. Um, we're kind of studying right now where rock and roll is separating into all these different things. So rather than just having Elvis Presley as rock, we have surf rock, we have skate rock, we have all these things. Um, and in that class, we do a lot of composition projects. So if you've ever been interested in using like Soundtrap or GarageBand, we use that a lot. Um, and we do other projects as well, such as creating a podcast to talk about things in the 60s in the music industry that students are interested in. Um, and then my goal in all of my courses is just that if you come here, I want you to be able to experience music in any way that you enjoy. And that could be something like piano class where it's the very one-on-one uh, -on -one type of course, work at your own pace. It could be a composition, online composition course with music history involved, or it could be choir where you are just out of the box and singing. Um, but essentially the biggest goal is that I want everybody to be a lifelong learner of music and I want people to kind of spark that passion. And I truly want students to feel comfortable joining a class in college if they take one of my classes, I want to give them the skills to have that comfortability. Um, and yeah, that is all. I'm going to pass it over to the other music teacher, Mr. Langford. Thanks, Amy. Hi, I'm Matthew Langford. Um, I, I teach all of the instrumental classes here on campus. Um, I am associated with Sage West, the dorm, um, and then I coach soccer as well. Um, some of what we offer here are classes for chamber music, um, like small ensemble. Uh, there's also an uh, opportunity to work on solo rep if you really want to challenge yourself um, and grow as an instrumentalist um, in that way. Um, we also have a nice recording studio on campus um, and a jazz rock ensemble. Um, so there's opportunity uh, in that group to really kind of dive into like the producing side. Um, and then I also teach um, composition and theory uh, courses as well. Um, and in those, in all of my classes, uh, I try to focus on like freedom of creativity um, and independent musicianship. So anyone in any of my classes, I want to um, gain a musical understanding um, and a confidence in themselves um, musically uh, so they can do anything that they want with, uh, with their instrument, um, be that majoring in music and performance um, or um, just continuing to love music and explore as many genres as they want to. Um, yeah, that's kind of, it's the overarching goal, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hand it off to Miss Marine, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miss Marine and uh, I am your theater teacher. And uh, we do three full seasons of theater after school. So that is an option as far as um, your afternoon sport or afternoon activity. Uh, there, there's a play every season and we do a musical in the fall or excuse me, winter. Um, and so that's a fun time. I teach theater during the day. And so you could start out with theater one, which is a place where the main goal is to um, find confidence in your communication, to learn to kind of jump off the cliff and to learn to make mistakes and make them big and learn from those. And, um, and build off of your mistakes. It's a very fun class. Um, and then we go into advanced theater, which is more the tools that you put in your tool belt to become that lead actor in the play. And uh, we do a lot of scene study and, and character building and theater history. Um, Audrey is in my class right now. And next week, as soon as we get the set down, we're doing low flying trapeze so that we can study movement and how to move from our center on stage. So anything that they need to um, learn to storytell with confidence and engage with others with confidence is what they learn in those theater classes. And uh, the program is, is a really fun time. Uh, we try to include the students as we choose the plays and ask 
what does the community need right now? It's for that reason that we're doing our first drama that we've done in five years, because since COVID, we felt like the community just needed to laugh. And so that's where we've, uh, that's where we've been. If you have any questions about theater, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to pass you off to Miss Audrey, uh, who is a lead actress in our program. I get to see her during the day in class as well. So I get to see her twice a day. And I also used to be her dorm mom in Valentine. And now she is sitting with her new dorm head. So go for it, Miss Audrey. Hi, uh, my name is Audrey. Um, I'm currently a four-year senior here. Um, I'm from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And like Miss Marine was saying, I... I have done theater for my entire life. So when I came to this school, I started theater this year, my senior year, and I bumped up to theater three. And now I'm in, uh, yeah, now I'm in advanced theater. So right now in theater, it's been really fun because we've just been, we've been talking about like the types of acting and which like how to really get into your zone with acting. Um, with my other arts classes, I've been doing arts every single year. I'm taking two arts right now. So I'm taking Ms. Faulkner's class, which is choir. <laughs> um, and then I've taken honors, uh, I've taken studio art one, two, and three, and then honors studio four. Um, I've taken pottery, which was very exciting. So I just, sometimes I just go in there and do pottery because it's just kind of a hobby. Um, I mean, I, I feel like the art here is one of like the best art schools. Uh, I love it here. Everybody's so like, like welcoming, but also they're very, um, they encourage you a lot to like do your best, but also they help you whenever you need help. Um, I always like my art teachers are my favorite, personal favorite teachers because I can always come to them whenever I need anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of it. Um, I'll pass it on to Lily. Hi, um, my name is Lily and I'm in 12th grade, so I'm a senior and um, I'm a day student from Colorado Springs. Um, and then at FBS, I've taken darkroom photography, digital photography and photo two, and then as well as medals one, medals two and medals three. So I've really had the opportunity to really go deep in a couple of um, very select fields and get to know a lot about those art programs here. And so that's been um, something that I'm really happy I've gotten to do. Um, and so the biggest thing that I love about the art programs here is the flexibility and creativity and kind of the individual's own um, interpretation of a project and being able to take it um, in their own direction. Um, and so in photography, that means shooting in a bunch of different styles. And I really enjoyed um, portrait photography and still life photography. Um, and then as well as getting the opportunity to use um, many different cameras. If like any camera that you want, it's there and you have it and you have access to it and you get to learn how to use it. Um, and so that's been something that's been really great. Um, as well as the campus being such a great place to learn how um, to shoot any style of photography because of all the things that are always going on. Um, there's always something interesting <laughs> to be able to shoot. So that's great. Um, and then in metal smithing, I've really, really loved the projects where um, we take traditional native um, art techniques and styles from Colorado. And we've used um, that those uh, styles to influence and inspire our projects. Um, because I feel like I learn a lot about art history as well as being able to um, use those styles in my projects and use them to inspire me. Uh, and this year I had the opportunity to learn how to cut and polish stone and use those in my metal smithing projects. And the access to that kind of technology is something that you don't get anywhere. Um, and so being able to have it here and have it so easily accessible and being able to learn how to use it is something that's really, really, really important to me and something that I've really valued. And Mr. Rankin, can I add one more thing? Absolutely. 
I'm so sorry. Thank you, Lily. Um, so I forgot to mention our tech theater department. I'm so sorry. Um, we do have two more faculty members that work with me um, in the afternoons for our tech program. And those students work throughout the day and on the weekends as well on different things from um, learning the electrical side of theater to lighting, to costuming, to set building, to crafting and prop making. Um, and that is this whole other piece of, of the theater department that if that interests you, it, this is a great place to do that. And we, um, um, right now our theater teacher, our tech theater teacher happens to be the head of engineering and robotics. And so that lends itself really well to the tech theater department. So thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Moraine. No, that was wonderful. And thank you very much to all of my colleagues and especially um, Audrey and Lily uh, for jumping on the call tonight and just sharing about their experience. Um, I, I lied earlier. I said that chat would be available for questions. And um, I'm, I'm one of those people that perhaps needs to talk to some of those tech people that you're speaking about, Ms. Marine, because I have no idea how to turn the chat on. So if, if you have a question, and I'm, I'm going to hand it over to our families now. So students, prospective students, um, uh, students that have um, decided they're coming to Fountain Valley next year, or any families, parents, if you have any questions now for any of our panelists, if you would like to turn on your camera and your microphone and jump in and ask a question now, um, that would be great. Again, if you don't have any questions or you don't feel comfortable uh, turning your camera on or question or, or your microphone right now, you are welcome to email me or our admissions team or any of the folks here on the call and ask your question directly. But um, I'm going to hand it over. I'm going to give you a, f a moment here to think about this to turn your camera on, turn your microphone and ask a question if you've got one. I was told I've got to wait seven seconds after you ask a question. You're going to wait seven seconds, give people time to think about it. Should I do it? Should I not? Should I, do I have the courage to do it? Oh, no, I've got noise in the background. Maybe I don't want to ask that question. I think, I think all of our all of my colleagues and and our student representatives tonight have been so thorough. They've given such good presentations. There's no questions. Matt, do you want me to talk a little bit about requ uh, class requirements, our sort of arts requirements? Absolutely. Thank you. I think someone has. I think Jane has oh, a question. Jane has a question. Jane. Oh uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Go oh, for I'm it. sorry that my camera is broken, so I cannot turn on my my uh, camera. So I have a um, several questions for international students. Um, so the first question is, um, how many Chinese students do you have at your school now? Um, Jane, that, that's a great question. And I don't have those numbers in front of me at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But Jane, it, what I'll do is um, I will get back to you with those numbers um, and all of our demographics um, tomorrow or even this evening, is it possible for you to give me your email address and I can get that information to you? Yeah. I don't know how to type because uh, I, I didn't see any <laughs> chat box here. That, that I know. I'm sorry. You know what, Jane? I'm going to give you my email address mm -hmm. and then you can email me that question and I'll get that information for you. Jane, before I let you go, do I have, um, do you have any questions for our art department specifically? Yeah, um, for, I mean, for international students, if they want to um, apply for your um, art department, so what's the requirements? I mean, for international students. Yeah, you know what, let me hand that over to Curtis because I think he was going to talk about requirements so he can mm -hmm. perhaps build um, you know, a response in uh, for international students too. Um, Jane, my if you email admission at mm -hmm. fds.edu, mm -hmm. then I can respond to your uh, question about um, our, our student population tomorrow or tonight. Okay. Okay, That's and right. I'm going to hand it over to Curtis now. Hi, Jane. Thank you for your question. Um, our arts requirements um, are pretty straightforward, um, and they're the same for all of our students. Uh, every student is required to take 
um, at least three semesters of art uh, divided between the performing and the visual arts. So that could be two semesters of visual arts and one semester of performing arts uh, or vice versa, two, two performance and um, one visual. In addition to that, um, all incoming ninth graders are required to take an art class um, just to sort of, you know, uh, be exposed to our classes from the get go. Uh, one sort of fun fact that uh, I am proud of is I'd say a good portion of our students um, take more art requirements than um, they are required to. For example, Audrey has maybe taken every art class we have. Um, so. I hope that answers your question. Oh, thank you. And uh, another question. Um, I mean, a lot of students want to um, attend art um, college or art major when they um, apply for their college. So will you um, help them propel um, the portfolio or something like that? I'll jump in again. Uh, yes, Jane, so we, we have... Uh, oh, really a, a broad range of talent here at the school, which I, I, we're very proud of. Uh, we have kids each year um, applying to competitive art school and then schools, and then we have kids who've never picked up a pencil. Um, currently, we have a portfolio class that we're in the process of changing um, a little bit to cater more towards students that are um, very focused in applying to sort of competitive art schools. That conversation needs to start more sort of junior year as opposed to senior year. So that's one of the changes that we're looking at. Um, so there is support. Um, you, we have th three visual art um, teachers here who are also working artists. Um, I've also sort of worked um, at the college level um, and sort of dealt with some of the admission stuff as well. Um, so we uh, make ourselves available to support the uh, creation of your portfolio um, and to provide at least sort of three different eyes um, for sort of critique opportunities and feedback. Okay, thank you for your information. Um, and um, do you, I mean, do you have a certain language level for the students who want to enter your department? No. Not no, at all, Jane. No, no. Okay. It's it, um, I, 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 there's, um, there are no sort of requirements. There are no limitations to signing up um, for any of our, 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 our classes. So. Yeah. Hey, Jane, Jane, I might jump in there too. Um, we, we, we do have um, English requirement levels for admission to Fountain Valley School, but again, um, I certainly can, um, we can take that conversation offline and I can go through um, sort of what are the expectations are in terms of um, the, the application process. And, and I'm happy to go through that with you. Perhaps we can start having a chat about those demographics and um, English language, language requirements um, at, at either this evening or tomorrow. Okay, no problem. And by the way, um, does your school um, offer any ESL or ELL um, program for um, the international students? Uh, absolutely. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. Great, great questions, Jane. Are, are there any other families with any questions at this stage? Uh, Mr. Rinkin, I thought of one more thing that we should probably mention. And that's, Absolutely. and that's dance. Um, so this spring we'll have, uh, we're working on having dance in the afternoon program. That's why we don't see a dance faculty present is because it's not something that's taught during the school day. Um, and then working next year on having dance offered in the winter. And so that would be, if you are a dancer, we have many um, students here who are heavy into dance programs off campus and then they bring it um, onto our campus whenever it's um, available. So I just thought I'd let you know that we do have one season that we are uh, working on this spring and then it'll be winter um, after school programming of dance next year. Great, thanks Ms. Moraine. Wonderful, well, um, Again, to our families, um, thank you very much for um, joining us this evening, um, midweek. I'm sure it's busy there where you are. Um, do not hesitate to reach out to me. 
um, all my my team here um, in the admissions office we'd love to help out with any questions um, questions outside of the art department or with um, art related questions and we can certainly get you in touch with the various different teachers and students here that have been on my on our call um, if I can just say once again, thank you very much to my colleagues for giving up their time tonight and obviously to Lily and Audrey as well for thank you for giving up your time as well. Um, just a plug, our next call is next Wednesday, February 22nd. That's a call with our athletics department. So learn about all things Fountain Valley School Sport next Wednesday and that call is at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So a little bit later than this evening. Um, you can also um, see all of our virtual events that are listed on our website under admissions events um, on the Fountain Valley School website. Um, and again, do not hesitate to contact us at admission at fes.edu. Uh, and that's it. Thank you again. Have a great evening. Bye for now.